Good day grade 10s. In today's lesson we're going to be looking at electrical conductors, semiconductors and insulators. So let's start with electrical conductors. Electrical conductors are substances that conduct electricity well. So metals are good examples of electrical conductors and that is because they have a sea of delocalized electrons. So let me explain what this means. Basically, if you've got a piece of metal and we're going to pretend that this metal is a very, very, very thin wire which is amazingly only two atoms wide. Okay, very, very small. And these are all your atoms and these are the nuclei which have got your protons and your neutrons in it. And these circles on the outsides are the orbitals where the electrons go around. Now, because the elements, the atoms that make up a metal are all the same, these are all at the same energy level. So this is at the same energy level as this. So electrons would normally go around the orbital, right? But now, because at this point here, and at this point here, they're at the same energy level. The electrons, if this atom is, is not having enough electrons, this atom at this point has the opportunity to go around. And at this point here, again, there is an opportunity for this electron to either travel around or it can go around this atom. Obviously it depends on whether or not these atoms are lacking in electrons or not. But now if for example I connect this to something that is positive, that pulls off an electron, what can happen is an electron can travel along here, along there, along there, along there, along there, and that's what makes metals very good conductors of electricity because they see of delocalized electrons. The electrons are delocalized because they don't belong to a specific atom, they can travel between the atoms. Some metals are better conductors than others. For example, copper and silver are very good conductors, whereas poor conductors are your zinc, your chromium, and your nickel. Insulators do not allow electricity to flow through them. So they do not have free electrons. They are non-metals are very good examples of insulators. So for example, glass doesn't conduct electricity, sulfur doesn't conduct electricity, and wood we know does not conduct electricity. Now let's look at semiconductors. These are substances that sometimes allow electricity to flow through them. Metalloids are good, are better conductors when they are heated, which is strange because we would think and we know that metals are poorer conductors when they are heated. And that is because, remember we had those little atoms? Now what happens is when they are heated, the atoms get a lot of energy so they start jiggling around and they move about and therefore it is very difficult for this little electron that's over here to jump to that atom over there. It actually has to wait for these atoms to get together again. So therefore metals are poorer conductors when heated but metalloids, your semi-metals like the silicon are better conductors when heated. So everyday uses of your metalloids, for example, this is a diode. Now diodes, you also get transistors and things like that, but this diode, in a lot of your light, your traffic light LEDs, which stands for light emitting diodes. And what they do is they give off a lot of light with almost no heat, in fact no heat, you can touch them and it also uses a lot less energy and that is an example of what we can use these, these metalloids for the semi-metals. Right, that's it for this lesson, I hope that, that helped, cheers.